This series of videos is designed to teach people exactly how and why evolution works. While I'll be offering plenty of evidence for evolution, the goal of this series won't exactly be to convince people of evolution. This is because evolution is open to about as much reasonable doubt as whether or not the Earth goes around the Sun, and time is better spent educating people on the specifics of it. As far as the level of technicality that these videos will be discussing, they're pretty much suitable for everyone. I'll be discussing everything from the, the intro to DNA, um, intro to genetics, all the way up to epistatic interactions. So whether or not you're a biologist, or you have absolutely no training whatsoever in biology, you'll still have a lot to learn, and hopefully the information will be presented in such a way that anyone can understand it and find it useful. I've been doing this long enough to realize that there are three types of people involved in the public debate. The first are people who are open-minded, intelligent, and understand the evidence for evolution and subsequently accept it. The second type of people are those who are open-minded, but they are not really sure of the evidence and they don't know what to think. They're fence-sitters, so to speak. Um, however, if they understood the evidence, they would accept evolution and they do have open minds. Thirdly, there are those types of people who sadly there is absolutely nothing whatsoever that you could ever show them. They will not accept evolution. Their minds are about as open and porous as a sheet of glass. There's, there's really nothing whatsoever that you could do. As Ken Miller often points out, his colleagues will often come up to him and say, well, what if we just showed them this experiment, or what if we did this? Would they then accept evolution? And the answer is simply no. When these people view evolution as the way they do, and they're not willing to accept or process any data whatsoever, there's absolutely nothing that you can do to get through them. And as such, I'm assuming this attitude, and I'll be pursuing it not addressing these people in my video. Quite simply, you can't fix stupid. This video, therefore, is aimed at the other remaining two people, those undecided and those decided. Now, those people who are undecided will get educated and be able to see the evidence so that they'll be able to better make an informed decision. Now, those who already have decided but aren't, don't really have extensive biological training will get that, for free nonetheless. So, to begin, this first video is essentially going to be discussing exactly what evolution is and, more importantly, what it is not. The National Academy of Sciences recently called evolution the unifying theory of biology. This is because it unites virtually every independent discipline in biology so that scientific advances made in one can be universally applied to all others. Now this has led to an explosion of research, and which is why evolution truly is at the core of biology. A famous biologist once said that absolutely nothing in biology makes sense except for in the light of evolution, and this is 100% correct. So with that being said, I'll furthermore dive into exactly what evolution is and is not. To begin with, evolution does not state that human beings came from monkeys. It states that we share a common ancestor which is completely different. Second of all, evolution and God are perfectly compatible. Evolution says absolutely nothing about the existence of a deity whatsoever, and as this recent um, survey shows, 70% of scientists accept or believe rather in a God. Furthermore, 99.98% of biologists accept evolution. So as you can see, there's clearly no discrepancy whatsoever. In fact, the past several popes have accepted evolution, and it's only in conflict with a literal interpretation of the Bible. Secondly, or thirdly rather, evolution doesn't deal with how life arose on Earth. It only deals with life once it's already here. The same holds true for the Big Bang, many other theories which are commonly confused with evolution. The Big Bang and abiogenesis are theoretical physics and chemistry, respectively. They have absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with biology and are about as related to evolution as they are the cell theory. Evolution is not something that one believes in. It's something that they accept. This is because evolution is a scientific fact. You don't believe in gravity. You don't believe in cells. You accept it and you acknowledge it. Now, evolution is not a belief also because it's testable, it's falsifiable, and it makes predictions. Hence, it requires absolutely no faith whatsoever, only acknowledgement. Next, evolution is not contradicted by really any evidence. Virtually every single ounce of evidence or observations that we can make about our natural world support evolution. Evolution was also not contrived to undermine any religion whatsoever. Basically, our awareness of it grew as we tried to make sense of the many observations of life that happened in a testable way. Evolution is not an accident or random process. There are some random components of it, however the vast majority of it is due to natural selection which is by definition a non-random process. Evolution is also not something which happens to specific individuals, instead it happens to populations. 
evolution is not something that only happened in the past. It's a current process, it has happened, it's happening now, and it will happen in the future. A quick comment before I progress too much. If in this video you find something that you want to learn more about, don't hesitate whatsoever to make a comment. I'm pretty good about responding. Furthermore, you should also take a look at the berkeley.edu website. They've got a fantastic evolution page, and it'll explain and reinforce a lot more of the concepts that I'm explaining to you guys. Also, another link that I would highly recommend to you guys is this Talk Origins FAQ. Um, this essentially rebuts virtually any creationist argument that you could ever dream of. If there's something so obscure that they're very good at pointing out randomly, you can find it here typically. And it's, it's a wonderful resource and highly encourage you guys to take a look at it whenever you run into any issues whatsoever if you don't have much scientific training, or if you're simply interested in browsing. Your time will be well spent. In a biological sense, evolution is best described as descent with modification. This leads to changes in gene frequency within a population over time. The idea is that an environment selects for an organism that's best adapted for survival in it, and they're encouraged to breed. This concept leads to a change in gene frequency over time as well adapted organisms breed at an accelerated rate, and their genes constitute a larger portion of the gene pool. As time progresses, populations become isolated, subdivided, and undergo different changes at different rates as they become um, very well suited to their environments. Now, after two populations will accrue enough differences, they'll no longer mate. When this happens, a new species is formed and they're said to have speciated. Now, this happens more common and rapidly than most people think. For example, scientists have observed 40 speciation events in the last 15 years alone. This is directly influenced by many factors, including generation time, which I'll get into in later videos. However, the point being that it's very common. Actually, some interesting news about just this topic came out last week. In 1971, five adult pairs of Italian wall lizards were transplanted to the island of Croatia. Now, they were an invasive species and essentially overran the indigenous population there. Go scientists. Well, the Croatian War of Independence broke out in 1971, or shortly thereafter, rather, and nobody was allowed on the island, at least not scientists, to study the effects on, until recently, in 2004. What they discovered was that not only had the new lizards overrun the island, but they had completely evolved. And not only had they evolved, but they had evolved at a rate that even surpasses what evolution would predict. In other words, this is a phenomenal example of lizards evolving at a rate that's it's much, much higher than, than one would predict. In fact, these lizards found, or, um, the lizards that were found developed sequel valves, which are muscles between the large and the small intestine that slowed down food digestion in fermenting chambers, which allowed their bodies to process the vegetation cellulose into volatile fatty acids. So essentially, they evolved an expanded gut to allow them to process these leaves. This is adding a brand new structure in just 30 years. Um, this is a wonderful example of a new species forming and the addition of a brand new structure, which is not um, originally present in the organism's genome. Because keep in mind, we have the original population of lizards as well back in Italy. So suffice it to say, we actually know a lot about this. It's happening continually, and it's an ongoing process that we learn more and more about every day and every year. This video has been a pretty basic introduction into exactly what evolution is. Now, my next videos will be focusing more on the biology of evolution in general, and specifically the next one will be focusing on the four forces which drive evolution. So stay tuned, guys, and once again, thank you very much for your time.